All right, hi out there, all you beautiful internet people. I've tried to make this video several times, but for whatever reason, I guess I've just never been able to get around to it. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite tapes in my tape collection, just because, you know, I've been collecting tapes for some time. If you know me, I'm a real tape nut, so here's some of my faves. Keep them all in this uh, nice transparent plastic box, you know, airtight, waterproof, keeps dust out. Not necessarily required if you don't live in a particularly dusty or moist climate, but, you know, hey, it helps keep them uh, organized, as Travis Bickle would say. And with that, let's get into some of my favorites. This isn't all of my collection. These are just the ones that are uh, in what I would say is my like heavy listening rotation. I have a lot of other ones, really obscure ones, you know, bootleg recordings, recordings forgotten to time, but these are just the pre-recorded studio albums that I'm really a big fan of. First up, we got G.E. Smith on the Saturday Night Live Band. When I first saw this, I was like, hey, there's a Saturday Night Live Band? Uh, you know, I know there's like a Johnny Carson band and a Stephen Colbert band and a Jimmy Fallon band. There's, a, there's an SNL band. And then I realized, yeah, there is an SNL band. They just stand in the background whenever the so-and-so does their monologue or whatever. They're just like there and uh, you never really notice them. But yeah, this is G.E. Smith and the Saturday Night Live band with Get A Little from uh, 1992. So we're talking the classic era of SNL when SNL was like at its absolute peak. And these are like just a bunch of songs that sound like the SNL theme song or Waltz and A, but uh, they're really cool. So yeah, if you like how the SNL theme song sounds, you know, that kind of like jazzy, funky, you know, just like, ooh, uh, then this is the one for you because uh, they really bring the heat on this one. Personally, I would recommend uh, tracks, uh, track two, Sluzy. Uh, that thing hits harder than it has any right to, and you wish it went on for like five more minutes, but it's pretty short as uh, uh, it's only like three minutes and 36 seconds, but Sluzy, oh my gosh, if that was the SNL theme, I think SNL would be having higher ratings right about now, because that's just like a freaking jam. I can't get enough of Sluzy. But yeah, this is a fun tape, uh, definitely worth picking up. I, I think it's really obscure, like I don't think anyone really cares about, you know, the SNL band, but uh, they really bring their all to this take, even though like nobody has ever heard of it. It's pretty wild. Up next is the Cocktail Motion Picture Soundtrack. There's Tom Cruise on the cover, the bartender deluxe looking all suave, ready to mix you up some drinks. This was one of my first tapes. I listened to this uh, during a dental procedure around 2019 on my Walkman. And uh, it was fun, you know, I just listened to the fun sounds of the Beach Boys and uh, John Cougar Mellencamp. Cocktail's a shit movie, like 100%, but the soundtrack is pretty good. It's got, you know, Don't Worry, Be Happy, it's with Bob McFerrin. It's got uh, Kokomo, Beach Boys. I don't, I don't even like the Beach Boys, really, but, uh, you know, I don't like, I don't hate Kokomo. It's got Tutti Frutti by Lil Richard, which is weird. Uh, All Shook Up by Ry Cooter, uh, which is a cover, of course, of the Elvis song of the same name. Wild Again by Starship. Powerful Stuff by the Fabulous Thunderbirds. My favorite is number three, Since When by Robbie Neville. I've always been a huge fan of that song for whatever reason. It's just like so eclectic. It really hits you. It really hits you. It really does. It's like cool. So yeah, the cocktail soundtrack is a fun listening experience, even if the movie itself is like complete shit. Up next, we have another compilation, Ultimate Funk Volume 2. There's going to be a lot of compilations on this uh, list. You know, if, if you feel like that's cheating or I should just include straightforward studio albums, sorry, I happen to like compilations, which are especially good for if you're, you know, out walking. You want a good mixtape with a lot of variety, so this has ton of variety. It's got like all, this isn't volume one. I guess volume two would have like, you know, play some funky music and celebration, like the more 
uh, really well-known funk songs, but this is kind of the second most well-known. It's got uh, Atomic Dog by George Clinton, which is so cool. It's got Love Roller Coaster, Ohio Players, uh, Get Down Tonight by Casey and the Sunshine Band, Jungle Boogie by Cool and the Gang, uh, Flashlight by Parliament. Yeah, just some really good funk. The, the font on this is like Comic Sans, so... I think this is like, you know, just a, a little licensing deal. They just got a bunch of the most popular funk songs, and they're like, hey, we'll put them on one tape. But, uh, yeah, it's great for walking. I've found, you know, when I'm out walking, I like listening to some funk. It has good rhythm to it. Up next, we got, you know, something everyone likes, Tom Petty, Full Moon Fever. I think I think Tom Petty's guitar skills really come in, come in the clutch here. And this pretty much has, you know, all his... All his uh, most well known. It doesn't got Mary Jane's Last Dance. It's got Run Down a Dream. It's got Free Fallen. It's got uh, Zombie Zoo. But not all of them are that great, but I think for what it's worth, Tom Petty really packs the heat. I got this at the uh, Denver Record Collectors Expo, and you know I saw it, and I was like, you know, I'll give Tom Petty a shot. Uh, I think it's very interesting to hear like the last. Uh, years of rock and roll really being like a popular genre before it kind of faded into irrelevancy and hip hop took its place as the most popular. I'd say the point at which rock and roll really died was when Lenny Kravitz did a, uh, Fly Away because that song is just such hot trash and it, it caricaturizes the whole, the whole genre. But uh, Tom Petty's take on, on rock and roll is really interesting, and uh, for what it's worth, I think he's like definitely one of the best rock musicians of the later years of rock. The, the J card comes with this cool little decal of like a Native American next to like nuclear reactors, and then there's of course the, the moon, the tarot card there. So. Very nice design. I like the uh, production value on this one, and I like the the fun little J card. I like it. I like tapes that that have a fun J card because that's you know that ups the value a bit. It's it's broken in two, but you know it's folded in. And uh, yeah, Tom Petty. I think for what it's worth, this is definitely the kind of album you should listen to all in one go, front to back, just because uh, he's really good and. More people these days, especially Gen Z, should know about how cool Tom Petty is. Right here we have the other tape I picked up at the Denver Record Collectors Expo, the Steve Miller Band with Living in the USA. This one has kind of a weird case where instead of snapping open, it like it like folds open and then you have to pull the tape out. It's really inconvenient, but uh, maybe they thought it would be more convenient or something. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of this type of case, but it's, you know, it works, I guess. The album itself is, I, I wouldn't say Steve Miller's, like, all of Steve Miller's best ones, because obviously he has a ton, you know, but it's got it's got the ones everyone, like, likes, like uh, The Joker, Living in the USA, some of his earlier stuff, obviously, because this is from, uh, these are from, like, 1973. The, the tape itself is a reprint from uh, 1990. I think Steve Miller, like uh, like Pink Floyd or uh, a lot of other bands, really have a, an ahead of their time sound where you're like, this was the 70s? Wow. You know, because Steve Miller really just sounds like a ton of the of, like modern bands. The Joker just sounds so modern. It, it, it's hard to believe that it was like in 1973. It just sounds like, you know, freaking Justin Timberlake or something. Steve Miller, again, is a, like a real trendsetter. I think the the uh, cover is cool. It's, you know, Steve Miller on the guitar, and there's these lines coming at him. Yeah, uh, not all of the ones on here are that great or anything, but it's got Gangster Love, it's got Space Cowboy. Steve Miller's fun to listen to. He's a goofball, you know, he's a he's a joker, so. And it, like I said, this one has jo the, the Joker on it, so. I'm surprised the Joker uh, wasn't part of the soundtrack of the new Joker movie. That is a shame, because the Joker is good. I also like the Fat Boy Slim cover. Not quite as good, but you know, it, it's serviceable. I mean, I don't think you can do a song as good as the Joker. Like, I don't think you can really do it wrong. Up next, we got the 
the Rolling Stones with Dirty Work, one of my only tapes recorded on Type 2 Chrome tape, which is really deluxe. It advertises it on the side and on the back and pretty much everywhere. This is from the Rolling Stones' oft-forgotten 80s period where they stopped being rock stars from the 60s and they're dressed in like these tacky Memphis group multicolored costumes. It's pretty weird, but uh, you know, I, I personally think Mick Jagger looks pretty, pretty slick in the 80s garb, even if he is a product of the 60s. Like I've said uh, a lot of times, I really do like the Rolling Stones. I think they're, a ton of their songs are really great and definitely shape the face of rock music. I like how they take uh, a more bluesy direction than uh, the Beatles, which, is, which really sets them apart. You know, the Beatles have like no blues. Uh, direction going on, but you you can just tell like with the Rolling Stones, you know You know a Rolling Stones song when you hear it. This is also one of my favorite J cards because it has a little comic in it A fun little comic and there's fun little illustrations sprinkled throughout the comic is really small The text is really small, but it's basically about this uh, like sadistic uh, gym instructor and she forces all these fat people to uh, exercise too much and then uh, at the end they they see a cupcake like she, she's trying to eat a cupcake and they all go at the cupcake and they choke her. It's pretty funny. As for the album itself, I guess it would work pretty good as workout music. There's some real hard hitting, you know, jams on here. This might be some of the most driven music the Rolling Stones ever produced. You got one hit to the body, Harlem Shuffle, uh, back to zero, and it ends off with Sleep Tonight, so maybe that's supposed to be the cool down track. But yeah, a pretty good workout tape, you know, if you're going out for a jog or something, maybe this would be the, the one for you. I don't know, I don't jog, but uh, yeah, dirty work is pretty good, all things considered, and proves that even by the 80s, the Rolling Stones really hadn't lost their chops. This is a 1986 here. Up next, we have uh, the Big Chill original motion picture soundtrack. I know next to nothing about the Big Chill other than Jeff Goldblum's in it, so I'd probably like it because I like Jeff Goldblum. Uh, but the soundtrack is just like the best of Motown. You got Natural Woman by Aretha Franklin, Tell Him by the Exciters, I Second That Emotion, Smokey Robinson. You got Ain't Too Proud to Beg by The Temptations. You got The Tracks of My Tears by Smokey Robinson. Good Lovin' by The Rascals. My Girl by The Temptations. Way to the World, Three Dog Night. Heard Through the Grapevine, Marvin Gaye. And uh, you got the Motown insignia down here on the bottom. So yeah, it's basically just like a Motown compilation tape. Um, even though it's the soundtrack for the movie The Big Chill. I guess The Big Chill just has a shit ton of Motown music in it for whatever reason. Um, and I really like that. I mean, Motown is a, an underrated genre, and this is definitely probably the best compilation it's possible to get. I mean, even an official, like, Motown compilation probably doesn't have uh, a, a, good, uh, a good enough arrangement as this one. So yeah, I popped this on. It's, you know, very nostalgic. It's very, uh, very fun, you know, just those all the cla all the classic Motown. I didn't even know what I was expecting when I first saw this. I was like, oh, it's just a movie soundtrack? And then I was like, oh shit, heard through the grapevines on here? Heck yeah. Uh, I like the California Raisins cover. You know, those raisins dancing around as they talk about how they heard it on the grapevine. But I think the Marvin Gaye original is kind of the, the superior one. But you know, California Raisins. Shout out. Here we have the Rolling Stones with Emotional Rescue, yet another Rolling Stones album. Um, this one is uh, uh, from 1980, so a little before they got you know tacky and all colored out. Um, this is kind of a kind of a kind of a more deep album, if you would. You know, you got Mick Jagger's face X-rayed there, and it's got some pretty good ones. It's got a uh, Dance Part One, which I think is a, a real jam. It's got. Uh, now the other ones are really that, like, they don't really have a driving pulse like the Rolling Stones are known for. But you got, you know, Indian Girl, uh, Down in the Hole, uh, Emotional Rescue, She's So Cold, so on and so forth, Summer Romance. This one's a little more calm, 
you know, it shows off the more sensitive side of the stones, but I, I like it, you know. I don't think you can really hate the Rolling Stones, even if, you know, not all of them are like the most pumped up, amped up, uh, pumped up kicks. All right then, next up, we got the best of Manfred Mann. Uh, for whatever reason, there's two versions of uh, Do What Diddy on here, and the Mighty Quinn is not on here, which I think is just weird, because that's like their other most well-known song, and it ends with, like, this long, boring, 30-minute group interview. I'm probably exaggerating, but, like, all the, all the best of Manfred Mann is on here, except Mighty Quinn, which I'm not sure what that's about, but maybe they just forgot. I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's not like, I don't know what the rights would be, but the Mighty Quinn is not on here, so don't expect that. But yeah, Do What Diddy Is, and uh, Cock a Hoop, Five, four, three, two, one. Hubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Sha la la. Uh, the one in the middle. If you gotta go, go now. You know, just like the, this really dumb, like you know, straight rock, just like hetero rock with no traces of homosexuality. You know, all their songs are about just how they uh, love girls and the, the girls are so hot. That's basically every Manfred Mann song, but at least they're honest about it, you know, unlike the Beatles, who pretend to be all deep and abstract and philosophical, uh, when they're just four guys that girls are uh, attracted to. Manfred Mann's really o open and honest about it, and they're just like, yeah, you know, we're, we're five guys that girls are attracted to, and that's our whole brand. So I kind of admire the honesty, and a lot of these songs are pretty fun, uh, ad admittedly. Even though they have like no nuance to them or anything, they're just really cheesy garbage. Like, Hubble Bubble is about like uh, this girl who's a witch and uh, she has to like go on a date with her or some shit. It's it's like it's so it's so stupid, but I I, I really do like it. There's also some songs like Machines that try to be like political and, and tired of trying. But, like, it, it just comes off as bizarre, because it's like, you know, do you want to be like these, like, beefcakes, or do you want to make, like, you know, protest anthems? Ultimately, I think Manfred Mann is definitely one of the better bands from the uh, British Invasion, miles ahead of the Beatles, because, like I said, they're more honest about how they're just a bunch of hot guys. In fact, uh, the one in the middle is just about that, like how they just, everyone just shows up at their concerts to see these five hot guys. And that's the whole, that's the whole deal, that's the whole package, that's what you're getting with Manfred Mann. I, I can't say I, I, I diss Manfred Mann, they're, they're very honest about uh, how they get, how they get popular, so, yeah. Next up we got Cool in the Gang Celebration, uh, another funk tape. Uh, I, th I don't think this is a, an official Cool in the Gang album, I think it's a, a compilation. But it's got uh, some of their best. It's got Celebration, obviously, at the beginning, uh, which is just the type of song you can't help but just like completely lose yourself to. No matter how many times you hear it, it's always it's always fun. Uh, that's followed up by Jones vs. Jones, which is a, a sad divorce song about Cool talking about how uh, he just got divorced. So it kind of ruins the mood of celebration. Not every song on here is a celebration, despite the title being celebration. We've got funky stuff, more funky stuff, slick super chick, uh, summer madness, life's a song, and it's got cool in the gank. Except on the tape, it says the song is called uh, cool in the gang. So I'm not sure if that's a typo or what. Maybe they did make a song called Cool in the Gang, I don't know. It's a good song anyway. And uh, Cool in the Gang obviously brings the heat when it comes to funk. Up next we got another compilation album, Jefferson Airplane Flight Log. I also have the Jefferson Airplane album, uh, Crown of Creation, on tape. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites though. Um, I also have Jefferson Airplane Takes Off on vinyl. Uh, but Jefferson Airplane Flight Log is probably the best introductory tape to Jefferson Airplane. Not Jefferson Starship, even though there are some Jefferson Starship songs on here. This is a great example of a compilation tape because it includes all the 
Jefferson Airplane adjacent acts and all the well-known Jefferson Airplane songs uh, throughout their discography in a kind of chronological progression. So you can hear like the sound of all as it goes from Jefferson Airplane to Jefferson Starship to Hot Tuna uh, to uh, Baron Von Tollbooth and the Chrome Nun. There's sketches of China on here. And it's, it's just a fantastic collection. Like it advertises here on the front, it contains the equivalent of two complete stereo records, which honestly most tapes are capable of because they're 90 minutes. And yeah, you, you got so many good ones on here. Silver Spoon, which I think is just like one of Grace Slick's best vocal performances. Why Grab It, obviously. Uh, coming Back to Me, Somebody to Love. Volunteers, Volunteers is, is uh, really hot. I think, I think there's one from like every Jefferson Airplane album just to ensure that like all the best, all like the, the creme de la creme gets put on here. But yeah, I'm, I, I, I've said this before, but I'm a huge Jefferson Airplane fan. I think they might be one of the best, if not the best bands uh, of the 60s. And I think, you know, uh, Grace Slick obviously is just such a gosh dang icon. She's some icon shit. And on this tape here, she really brings the heat. Why Grab It is such a gosh dang jam. And it's really fun to listen to this late at night because it's very psychedelic, very... Uh, very gush dang trippy. And yeah, it's got some hot tuna on here too, for those of you who are fans of hot tuna. This is yet another compilation album. Last one, The Rolling Stones Hot Rocks, 1964 to 1971. Every good Rolling Stones song is on here. You know, I know I said Dirty Work and Emotional Rescue were good, but like all the ones everyone likes is on here. This has Times on My Side, Heart of Stone, Play With Fire, I Can't Get No Satisfaction, As Tears Go By, Get Off of My Cloud, Mother's Little Helper, 19th Nervous Breakdown, Pain of Black, Under My Thumb, Ruby Tuesday, Let's Spend the Night Together, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Street Fighting Man, Sympathy for the Devil, Honky Tonk Women, Give Me Shelter, Midnight Rambler, You Can't Always Go What We Want, Brown Sugar, and Wild Horses. So, like, every song on here is so good, which is, like, hard to get on a compilation album. Usually on a compilation album, there'll be, there'll be at least one that's not good, but holy, holy crap, the Rolling Stones really like, like every song on here is good. So yeah, if, if you're sick of the Beatles, if you're sick of listening to Rubber Soul and being a little music infant, then go on over to the Rolling Stones, you know, graduate to some real rock and roll that actually slaps, that actually hits hard. And maybe you'll understand just why uh, the Beatles are a laughing stock among people who actually understand what rock and roll is all about, and they're not even the best British invasion band. The Rolling Stones obviously got their start in 1964, uh, a while after the Beatles, so the Beatles had a head start on them, as it were, but I definitely think the progression from Time is on My Side to Wild Horses and like Brown Sugar and their later stuff is very apparent in here as it is on the Jefferson Airplane compilation, you know, the, the evolution of the Rolling Stones sound. And obviously, like I said, the blues influence is so flippin' strong. And uh, yeah, this just has like every freaking favorite, you know, just like every Rolling Stones song everyone likes is on here, so. And I love, I love this freaking uh, shot here of Mick Jagger's head just receding infinitely. It's like it's inside itself. Or no, I think it's it's all the Rolling Stones inside each other, or I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess that'd be it. Uh, I actually have the same compilation album on vinyl, but it's way bigger. It's like two records, and this tape says it's equal to two LPs. And the, 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 the actual album on vinyl is so chunky. Just another example of why Compact has set such great format. It can fit like two entire bulky records on it. That's really fantastic. I mean, if you're not using Compact Cassette, you're missing out because, I mean, this is like two records in this tiny little cassette. It's amazing. All right, and we're finishing off on a strong note. This is quite possibly my favorite tape in my entire collection. It's uh, the James Gang, Bang. This is some of the hardest hitting 70s rock you're ever likely to hear. It is on another level. And the fact that so many people haven't heard of the James Gang, just like, it blows my mind, honestly, because they're so 
cool and so good at creating like atmosphere and a, a, a cool sound. This tape just is the best. I listen to this when I'm out on my tricycle. I listen to this out walking. I listen to this as much as possible. This is my oldest tape. It's from 1973 and it's lasted 80, 90, yeah, like 50 years. This is a 50 year old tape right here and it sounds like it was recorded yesterday, which is a good example of how the urban legend about tapes decaying is just complete bullshit. I listen to this one all the time. It's so good. Uh, and it's the oldest one. It's got so many good songs. It's got uh, Standing in the Rain, The Devil Singing Our Song, Must Be Love, uh, it's got an acapella song, Rather Be Alone With You, aka Song For Dale, which I think is really interesting, like this 70s hard rock band doing an acapella bit. Really interesting stuff. Of course, you might have noticed, it's got the, the classic type case, which was more common in the 70s, where you slide it in, and it snaps in, and then you slide it out. I'm not, I'm not such a big fan of this type of case, but I do think it's really cool. It's the only one I've got, so. I think it's, I think for what it's worth, this is a, a pretty fun type case. You know, to pull it out and push it back in, and pull it out and push it back in. I think the design that goes into this, you know, it's admirable. And it definitely adds to, like, the really old-fashioned charm. Oddly enough, even though this tape is 50 years old, you're not likely to find harder hitting rock anywhere. Like, the James Gang goes so hard. If anyone tells you that, oh, old, old, old rock and roll sucks, then have them listen to James Gang, bang, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, what, what have I been missing? I need to listen to more old rock and roll, because uh, this shit is fire. Obviously, the, the label is experiencing a little bit of bubbling which is common on, uh, you know, stuff with uh, a certain type of adhesive on it. Really difficult to make out the picture on the cover. I think it's uh, the whole James gang uh, around like a prostitute or something, and they're on top of like an airplane or a car or something. I've seen the album artwork online, but I forget exactly whether they're on an airplane or a car. I guess the joke is that it's the James gang bang, or something, you know, it's it's a little raunchy, but whatever. The the songs on here are just so freaking good. Uh, my absolute favorite is Ride the Wind on side two, which I think was featured in that, like, second House of a Thousand Corpses sequel, uh, Three from Hell, after Devil's Rejects. So it's nice to know that, like, at least Ride the Wind is getting some exposure because it is, like, so good, so like unbelievably good that you're like, how do I not know about the James Gang? And apparently this isn't even like their best album, like this is considered to be after their peak, so if this is after their peak, I can't even imagine what their peak must have been like, so I'm gonna look for more James Gang albums, obviously. Apparently they had kind of, you know, a short-lived run, like a lot of 70s bands, like Sugarloaf or whatever, so might be hard to track down some more uh, James Gang cassettes, especially from before this, because, uh, like I said, this is 1973, and it's hard to find 60s cassettes, or like 1970 cassettes, but... Yeah, Ride the Wind, every time Ride the Wind kicks on, and I'm um, walking, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is the shit. I need more of this infuse it into my veins. Such a cool song. Like, I can't even believe how awesome this gets. But yeah, this is the type of tape that, you know, everyone should have at least one of these in their collection, just like a, a tape that's so good, but also kind of obscure that nobody knows about, so you can brag about it, you can be like, I got this on cassette. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely bragging rights to have this, because uh, this is freaking dope as heck. It is a gosh dang banger factory up in here. Uh, yeah, that sums it up pretty much. That's my whole uh, cassette collection. Not my whole cassette collection, just my uh, just my personal favorites. I left out quite a few. I got a Tom Jones tape. I got a, a tape from Reader's Digest called Aloha Hawaii with just like luau music on it. 
and a uh, Hawaiian girl on the front. I guess this is for if you go to Hawaii and you want to listen to some fun Hawaii music, you can bring along this tape. I definitely will if I ever go to Hawaii. I left out Joe Cocker's greatest hits. I'm not really much into Joe Cocker, but he's okay. I left out the two comedy albums I got, Steve Martin Wild and Crazy Guy, and George Carlin Parental Advisory Explicit Lyrics. Both of them are great, both of them have a lot of uh, laugh value in them, but you know, I'm trying to cover the music more. I left out the best of Delaney and Bonnie, because I, I gave him a try, much as I tried. I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm just not that into, not that much into Delaney and Bonnie. They're okay. Uh, you know, I can't say I like, or I dislike them or anything, but those are the runners up, pretty much. My tape collection, my favorites in my heavy listening rotation that I listen to whenever I'm out on a walk. I got my, I got my Walkman on, like Stacy Q says, and uh, yeah, tapes are just fantastic to have around. And uh, to all those of you who just listen to music on your phone, I mean, you're, you are missing out on like some listening to really good sound quality. Walkman, they're really cheap. I mean, some of them are more expensive, but they're really cheap on just like, you know, eBay or whatever, or probably even like anywhere online. There's tons of models. You can choose whichever one's right for you. Some of them go as low as like 20 bucks. So yeah, anyway, that's about it. Uh, that's been my favorite tapes, and uh, hopefully I've shown some light on some underrated classics here. Uh, some some uh, classics everyone can agree on, too. And that's going to do it for me. Sayonara, suckers, and all the ships at sea, and see you next time, and see you around, and all that jazz. Uh, that's going to do it.